there's no me in science, but there is an I. We're not a language show, so I don't really know what that means. Anyway, here's our next guest. This show has always been about inspiring young women to change the world through science, technology, engineering, and math. If there's one thing we know, girls are good for STEM, and STEM is good for girls. The organization that coined that phrase and proves it every day is our sponsor, TechBridge Girls. Its aim is to re-engineer STEM education by providing educators with the curriculum and training they need to help girls of color from marginalized communities pursue STEM careers. A philosophy that guides educators like Julissa Escobar, who helps thousands of kids and teens in California's Silicon Valley. STEM is good for girls because they're going to bring a new, a new perspective, a new idea, a new way around things. And I think getting as many heads or as many opinions on that as possible is the most important thing. One of the many students Julissa has helped is Alize Serna Aguilera, who wasn't always a fan of STEM. What made me like science and engineering was Julissa because when she explained it to me in a way that I could understand, I really got the hang of it because she cared to do experiments and building, creating things, it just, it got really exciting. To further the sense of belonging in the world of STEM, today, Julissa is showing Alize that although Latinas only represent 2% of STEM jobs, they are out there, like STEM superstar and process engineer, Erica Gabrielle Hansen, who helps create cutting edge computer chip technology at our sponsor, Applied Materials. Can you name anything that you use in your daily life that has chips in it? My phone, my laptop. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and what about you? My watch, my TV, I mean, I think even my house. Practically everything that we use on a daily basis uses chips. It helps enable business, it helps enable the medical industry. All these incredible things are things that we make possible. What's a process engineer? Kind of a mixture between a chemical engineer and a mechanical engineer. So I work a lot with different chemistries and we kind of change those to modify materials. So a lot of times I'm working on adjusting different hardware that can change the, the outputs that we want on our processes. So we have an example of a pattern wafer here. The process of making a chip is basically adding a bunch of materials, removing materials, modifying materials, and inspecting materials. Each chip probably has 3,000 steps, and then eventually all of those materials and all of the processes become a chip like this. So you can see an example here. If you drop it, it'll break, but it, it's fine with you. <laughs> Go! <laughs> no, 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 you can totally hold it. It's totally fine. Oh, it's light. It's very light. Yeah. I even know. <laughs> Each of those little squares would be an example of a chip that would be cut out, packaged, and then eventually put into your phones, computers, your microwave. And it's crazy to think that there's 60 miles of wiring in one of those little chips. And we have 11 billion transistors. Does the color impact the performance of the chip? Yeah, the color that you see here doesn't necessarily impact how the chip behaves, but it's more of what material you're seeing on the top of it. So I would love to show you an example of one of our manufacturing systems that actually does some of the removal process. The minuscule scale of chip manufacturing means tiny bits of dust are a big deal. So everyone puts on what's called a bunny suit before visiting the laboratory clean room. Machines here turn silicon into microchips with robots and chemical processes designed by engineers like Erica, adding and removing materials at atomic levels of precision. And maybe one day, tech bridge girl, Alize. We're removing 100 nanometers of oxide. So to put that in perspective, your red blood cell, one red blood cell is about 10,000 nanometers. So you're removing 100 nanometers, so even smaller than that. That's how precise we can get with these tools. After today, I know that somebody like me belongs in engineering or in science. I have role models that look like me and knowing that I can make a difference, like Erica. Thank you for having us. This was a really cool experience. I never knew your job existed. I also want to say, like, this means so much to me. Being able to see this facility with someone who looks like us and sounds like us, I think it's something you don't see a lot in the STEM world, let alone in the engineering world. So knowing that someone like you does it is probably the best part about this entire experience. I believe that we all support each other, and I'm so excited to see where us Latinas and STEM go in the future. You're back! <laughs> 
If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.